This channel has never been anything but positive. We've never complained about anything. We have no complaints, no issues with anything. Company's good, product's good, everything good. So on that train of thought, I thought today we would talk about another really good thing, and that is Insomniac's Marvel Spider-Man. Now, this game did a lot of things right, and people love it, especially superhero fans. But something I don't think gets talked about enough is how well it did DLC, mm -hmm. especially in an age of microtransactions and milking everything. So today, Nate and I are going to kind of talk about that. So if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content. We appreciate you very much. Uh, growing quite a bit. When we record this, we're over 116,000 subscribers. So thank you very much. And we appreciate you. And also, if you do enjoy this video, we have other channels in the links down below. The Derek Plays We Play Games On, The King of Creepy is a Scary Horror Channel, Magical Jill is my wife's channel that I'm on all the time. Very good stuff, so we hope to see you there. So Marvel's Spider-Man, it's a lot like Batman Arkham in the sense of it knows it's a single player game and it knows it could make money off of you. And sometimes it does, but overall it only does it when it has something worthwhile to give you. Yeah, and that's something that I think is really cool. It's a single player game, but they also added all this other stuff that, yeah, it's cost money, but it, you feel like you're getting a lot. The DLC for it, they added a lot of content. Mm -hmm. And that's something I really like. I mean, story aside for the DLC, they added a lot of costumes and stuff like that into it. Like, how many costumes were there? What's the final count? So essentially, as of August 2022, mm -hmm. because I'm not going through and counting them all again, there were 40 suits in the game if you included all of the DLC, all of the free updates, and of course as well, all of the suits actually in the game. Yeah. Nine of those suits were purchasable, of course. There were also some suits added when they did the PS5 remaster of the game. For example, the Andrew Garfield Amazing Spider-Man 1 suit mm -hmm. was added in during that time. But for each DLC, it was three suits, and then there were also freebies, like the Raimi suit was yeah. added in for like a Christmas freebie, like a fun thing. Mm -hmm. Then when No Way Home was coming out, there also were a couple of suits added in for that, like black and gold and the integrated suit, mm -hmm. which honestly, that integrated suit, I think is really cool. Yeah, that one's a really cool outfit. But I think that with this game, one thing they did really cool was not just give you your money worth, but also just give you free stuff like, hey, thanks for playing our game, here's a costume. Well, yeah, and that's something that I always felt with the Insomniac Spider-Man was a lot of companies didn't really do this at all. They released the game, maybe they released a costume or two, and I was like, okay, there you go. But with Spider-Man, I actually felt like they cared about the audience. Mm -hmm. And I felt like they cared about their game and their content, that it was like, oh, hey, yeah, our audience is Spider-Man fans. Hey, remember the uh, Sam Raimi Spider-Man? Yeah, you like those movies? Yeah, well, here's the costume. Mm -hmm. Or here's here's Amazing Spider-Man. Here's the Tom Holland movies costume. And or the one like based that. on Common Riders. Remember that? Yeah, they, yeah. they like randomly just kind of were like, oh, by the way, here's a like fun thing that right. we came up with. Yes. There you go. And those things, they worked. They worked in photo mode. Mm -hmm. They worked in cutscenes. Yeah, they, they weren't were... like glitchy or anything like that. No, yeah. they worked in gameplay. Yeah. I'm honestly really impressed with just how the suits were handled. Mm -hmm. But I think we could talk about the suits for 30 minutes or so and, and just how great they are. At the end of the day, we like how they handled it. Mm -hmm. Some came with the story DLC. Some were just given to you for free. And no matter what, everybody got something for buying the game. But... Also, the story DLC I thought was handled really well with The City That Never Sleeps. It is accessed from a different menu, so I understand there were some complaints that it wasn't just integrated into the overall world, but really the reason for that, you know, was actually just that it was pretty much an epilogue. Right. And it dealt with a lot of dangling plot threads as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it dealt with things like, remember Yuri? Yes. And how it dealt with some of her storylines. And I also really liked how it expanded some on Black Cat and sort of that relationship there. Black Cat's always been like a main Spider-Man character, so it was really interesting to see her story actually get expanded. That was something I really liked about the DLC in general, was it it felt like it was a part of the game, or like an epilogue, like you said, where it felt like you played the game and you were like, okay, that was really fun, I liked the story, and then you get to the DLC and it's like, oh hey, remember some of these features about the game that you played? Yeah, well here's a little bit more of the story there. There you go. Do you like that? It was well done. Mm -hmm. It added in a lot of content to it. It reminds me a lot of like Bethesda DLC too, where it just, it felt like it was really well done and pretty amazing. And planned. So, yes, and planned. That was the other word I was looking at too. 
Because I think that one thing that's cool with Black Cat is, you remember the missions for her in the actual just standalone game? Yeah. And you would go around, you'd take these pictures, and you'd find her little hidden mm -hmm. trophies, and it'd be, what's Black Cat up to? What's going on here? Yeah, they were fun. And they start getting into that in the DLC. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of just asking questions and being like, look, a mystery, hoo, 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 they actually solve it. Right. You know, I think anyone can introduce dangling plot threads. Mm -hmm. People do that in storylines. You'll see dangling plot threads that are never addressed again it always pisses people off mm -hmm. something i like about marvel spider-man is they actually took that into account when making more content they were like uh well we talked about this maybe we should do something with it right you know chekhov's gun i'm sure you know what this is nate in storytelling but it's the idea that things should have a purpose mm -hmm. you know they should have a reason for being there and if you're going to be bringing them up and drawing attention to them there should be some point right because it's a story and when you don't do that, I think you lose a lot of people, or at the very least, irritate them. And I think that the DLC of Spider-Man did a really good job of actually fulfilling some of the things that they foreshadowed, which is one reason I'm so excited for the next game. You know, the idea, too, that they would be like, well, what about after Mr. Negative and, and his group rolls through here, now there's kind of a power vacuum after what happened with Fisk and what happened with him. Oh, look, now the Magia is kind of popping up again. Look at Hammerhead and things going on with that, I think that kind of normal escalation, and not even just saving it for a sequel, but being willing to talk about it in a DLC, I actually think it's kind of ballsy, because they could have just saved that for a sequel, and just tried to stretch it out over 20 hours. Mm -hmm. But they didn't do that, because they were like, well, this isn't a, a big enough story for a full-on sequel game, so let's make a DLC. Yeah, and that, that's pretty cool. And even something like Miles Morales felt like it was a pretty expanded DLC. And that felt great, too. Because Miles Morales was obviously in the base, you know, Spider-Man game. He was cool. Mm -hmm. You kind of got a taste of Miles Morales in that in more ways than one. And I felt like Insomniac was like, hey, did you like that character, Miles Morales? Well, here's a, here's a game. Yeah, it's not a full-length, you know, 50-hour, you know, experience. But it was an actual game. And it was and fairly decently long. Yeah, it was. You know, it wasn't yeah. tiny. I think right. it reminds me a lot of something like Assassin's Creed Freedom Cry. Yes. Where yeah. it's technically its own yeah. standalone or Liberations thing. too. Yeah, but like it also feels like an add-on. Yes. And I know that they hated that term. Like they, you know, everybody says it's a full game, and mm -hmm. I think we agree. It is. It is but, a full game. But, but it's more like a, a smaller, more direct game. Mm -hmm. I actually think in some ways it has some strengths above the original because of that. Yeah. It's more streamlined, it's more to the point, it doesn't beat around the bush. Mm -hmm. It goes kind of in a straight line to where it's trying to go. And because of that, it's able to explore those character relationships, like with, obviously, Miles' uncle and his mm -hmm. mother and the loss of his dad and things like that, and what happens to your family when things like that happen. I thought that they did a really good job with that because they were more to the point. Mm -hmm. And I feel the same way, you know, to, to speak to the strength of that, what you brought up there, I feel the same way with The City Never Sleeps. Yes. It could have been long and drawn out, but they decided, let's get to the point, let's do what we should with this story to tell something fun and add on to the world, and they did it. Well, and also even in, in your other point there, it could have been something that was like totally unrelated to the world. Mm -hmm. Like, it could have been like, you know, here, here's a storyline about Scorpion. And, you know, and you're kind of like, okay, Scorpion's cool. But let's say, like, the story of it was totally disconnected from the game. Mm -hmm. Your opinion of that would be like, oh, well, I like Scorpion. That was cool seeing him. But that's it. Right, it has no so, ties to anything. Right, exactly. So they did a good job being like, well, let's take some elements from the actual base game and expand those. Mm -hmm. That's something I thought was really cool. You know, uh, that's something I thought was actually a strength of it. So. Well, it's something I hope to see more, and we're doing another video on DLC soon, actually, uh, for a different series, but I think something I wanted to mention in a closing thought is that I think more games could learn from this. Yes. You know, this is the sort of old-school Bethesda-style approach to DLC of let's expand our world, not let's just microtransaction them. Mm -hmm. This is the same kind of approach I think we saw from the Iki Islands, yeah. You know, you can... Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, yeah. I thought that that was really neat. Mm -hmm. you, you actually showed me that, and I, I hadn't played Ghost of Tsushima at the time, but it made me actually want to. Yeah. You know, because it was... It tied in, but it was also a standalone experience. And I think that what's really cool about Spider-Man's, you know, City That Never Sleeps 
is it works both as a sequel, like a mini sequel to Spider-Man, but also as just a Spider-Man story. Right. And I think that that's kind of how you have to do it. So anyways, let us know what you think in the comments down below. Please be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this and subscribe for more content. We appreciate you very much. All of our other channels are in the description down below. Uh, one I really want to draw your attention to, my wife Jill has been working very, very hard on Magical Jill, and she's got some superhero stuff coming up as well. So I look forward to being on that channel too, and I hope you'll check it out. Have a fantastic day, and as always, everyone, stay shway.